Uh, it's generally ill-advised to do what we're doing right now. Well, buenos dias. Although I should say buenos noches, because the last time you saw me at this table in real time was only a few hours ago. In these episodes, it might be a couple weeks, but we just wrapped up an episode at this very table, the Sky Ladder. And we're going for another line tomorrow because we've got a weather window and we got to take advantage of it. The line itself is Mount Columbia in Alberta actually happens to be the tallest mountain in Alberta. It stands over 12,300 feet high, and uh, the crux of the line is the distance invert from here to get to the summit. So we've got 42K of walking. And for my American friends, that's over 26 miles, which literally means there's a marathon of a ski line. We're gonna be covering over 8,000 vert in the process. And it's snow go up and then come back down. This is uphill both ways. So the, the crux to me is really deciding whether to do it in one day or two. There's downsides and upsides to both. So if you're gonna do it in two, you're breaking up one big day in a couple of days. Um, you also have the ability to have a camp to hunker down if anything goes wrong and to wait out any sort of weather or storm system. But the downside is you're obviously bringing a heavy pack, you know, at minimum 40 pounds and most of the time about 50. And that can be almost as exhausting sometimes as doing it in one. The downside to one day push is that you're really hanging it out there. You gotta get out there and back in a day and have nothing go wrong because you're trying to go light, you're trying to go fast. You don't have a tent, you don't have a pad, you don't have a sleeping bag to wait anything out. So you're really, really having to push and have the right weather and the right abbey conditions in order to make it happen. When I like to make the decision between whether I do it in one day or two, it really happens to be made by the weather and abbey conditions. So for us, we have good cold temperatures, we have very long days, and we have pretty dang st stable weather. So to me, that says you can do it in one day. Um, because if we had to time a melt freeze cycle on the south face of Mount Columbia, we might want to do it in two and get out there and get up super early and ski the thing when it's uh, before it gets too warm. But for us, we're not, we're not totally having to worry about that. So we're going for one, one big day, a marathon in the mountains, a day after we just got done with another big line. But uh, that's the way she goes. Um, and that tomorrow morning is going to be waking up about 2 a.m. and starting at 3. Well, good morning. It is 3 o'clock and we are going for a marathon today. Legit, 26 miles or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And Taylor showed up, got him. He bivvied in his truck while we fell asleep at like 8.30. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, hopefully the weather holds today. <laughs> That's the main thing. So um, nothing left to do except for go walk for the next 12 to 14 hours. <laughs> so, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, not huge, but scary. Our first crux of the day is walking under the snow dome Serac. Not huge, but enough to put the jetpack in your butt and fucking fly, fly across as fast as possible. This is the time as the camera person when you don't take up the big camera and stop and filming. You don't want to have that shit on you.
of the most interesting things about this line, Mount Columbia in Alberta, is the fact that this is possibly the hydrological apex of North America. This is possibly one of the most important places for water in the world, and definitely in North America. You see, this mountain right here, Snowdome, that mountain is a triple continental divide. And there's debate about it, but it may be the only true triple continental divide in the world. You see, there's three rivers that run from this ice cap to different oceans. So you've got the Athabasca, the Saskatchewan, and of course, the Columbia River. And those rivers respectfully flow to the Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Pacific Ocean. Those are three very large rivers, very important rivers for water across North America. And they all start right here, right on this ice cap. And you're at the base and showing how the Athabasca is retreating so fast. And you realize like this giant frozen reservoir of water, is it gonna be here? in the future. But right now, the Athabasca is retreating at five meters per year. Except for last year, during the heat dome, we retreated 15 meters in one year. So that retreat could accelerate. And already scientists say the Athabasca is going to be gone in 100 years. The rest of this could be not that far behind. It. I don't want to be too depressing, but it's kind of what's on our minds these days. The world is changing and we're going to have to adapt to it, change things for the better. I think we're about six hours in, and we are right about the base of the climb to the summit of Columbia. Out that way, somewhere up there is the summit. to tell if we're on the top or not. Well, and I just got really dizzy. You really got to look like two feet in front of you. You look, try and look down the slope. You ain't going anywhere when we're skiing down this. Uh, yeah, I can't say I've ever skied and summited a mountain in a complete whiteout that is completely in the Alpine and glaciated at that, that I had no familiar knowledge with before. Now we try not to do that here, but yeah, yeah, no, it's it generally more often than not. <laughs> it's generally <laughs> ill-advised to do what we're doing right now. Go yeah, ahead, it's go. gotta be right there. Oh yeah, that's the top for sure. We are on the summit of Columbia. Yeah. And you know how you can always tell where you're on the summit? P spots. There's plenty of them. But literally, I kind of when we were on that ridge line, I was like, oh, we gotta get close, but it looks like maybe a hundred feet away. It was like 10 steps. <laughs> The thing about this, what I kind of learned in all the research, you know, I looked at the book and I was kind of like, ah, it's straightforward. This line is no gimme for, it seems like it takes a lot of pretty experienced people, a lot of attempts. Because it's weather, right? Yeah. It's so far away. It's like its own mountain out here, right? You're so yeah. far away from like the twins and everything else in the Columbia. 
Yeah, man. 14 miles, 7,000 vert. We're on this, the highest peak in entirely in Alberta. The mother of water for North America. Now we just got to ski down and walk another like 10 miles back. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Oh, we're partying. Definitely been walking back out on the descent far longer than we anticipated. This place is like a desert. There's all these mirages and like, but it's actually like looking for a stranded eye or when you're stranded at sea and looking for an island. That's what it's like. Keep seeing bumps in the horizon. You're like, oh, there it is. That's where it's all down from there. And then the bump never materializes and you're still walking. We are back at the ice fall and we're going home. Yeah, we got, we got to run the gauntlet one more time, but we got the addition of going fast to help us. And then we're also gonna grab some ice for some whiskey. Celebrate. Alrighty, let's go skiing. table. Oh, what a long day. We started 14 hours ago, 1328 13, from picnic table to picnic table and 28 miles and 8,000 vert. That was a hell of a day. Oh, this deserves a special celebration. Oh, glacier ice whiskey. Unless you want a hard kombucha. I'm going right into that whiskey. Oh, whiskey, yeah. I'm gonna drag that glacier ice all the way down here for nothing. No. Perfect. Oh, see one in here. Special celebration for today. One more. Yeah. Two shots. <laughs> Two Bar shots. <laughs> Double, please. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Well, dude, hell of a day. A long day. Oh, yeah, it was. Beyond just, you know, climbing and skiing, the highest mountain in Alberta, I think this one deserves a special celebration because that's a wrap for the 50 of year four, um, calling it a season. We were originally planning to go up to Mount St. Elias for another rebate. And that's being postponed until next year. Um, a lot of different reasons for that, but for the most part, it's still gonna be out there. And in fact, there's seven lines still out there. And I don't know exactly what the future holds, but I do know that I'm gonna keep trying those seven last lines. How long that takes? Could be two, could be 20 years. 
If you want more updates of the project, definitely give a follow on social media. You can follow at The 50 Project, at Cody Townsend, on Instagram, on Twitter. That's where I tend to put a lot of day-to-day -day updates of what's going on. Until the meantime, year five, we'll be doing it one more time. You in, BRNA? One more year? Yeah. Sweet. That's a yes, right? That's a yes.